All right, this is the video for Sedimentary Rocks, part one. So I'm expecting you guys to take out your notebooks and jot a few things down. You can pause the video if you want, rewind. But by the end, I'm hoping you can have information so you can answer these questions. What are sedimentary rocks? How do they form? Why are sedimentary rocks important? And what are the two different ways we can classify sedimentary rocks? We're going to start off with this picture. This is the Grand Canyon. You can see these are sedimentary rock formations. And as we can see in the next picture, we have the Colorado River cutting through the sedimentary rock. And that's what basically formed the Grand Canyon. So the processes of weathering and erosion occurred to cut through the pre-existing rock and to form this very deep canyon. One of the things I'm hoping you see in this picture, especially if you look at the walls of the canyon, the very vertical parts of the walls, and in this previous picture, besides really just the beauty of sedimentary rocks, are the horizontal layering that form oftentimes with this kind, these kinds of rocks. So what are sedimentary rocks? Well, they're the rocks that are formed from sediments, which sounds dumb, but sediments are small pieces of other rocks. So when rocks undergo the process of weathering, which means you break them down or mother nature breaks them down in some way, those rocks form sediments. If we take those sediments and put them back together, you form a sedimentary rock. Only 8% of all the rocks on earth are sedimentary rocks, which course is it's small but these rocks are found mostly at the surface so 73 percent of all of the rocks found on the continents are sedimentary rocks right at the surface if you go down a little bit below those sedimentary rocks you'll find a much thicker layer of either igneous or metamorphic those structures are referred to as the igneous basement so most of the rocks on earth are, are igneous but the ones that are closest to the surface are most often sedimentary and so in our backyard, we find this to be true. You probably recognize this place, but what you are looking at are sedimentary rocks cut by a river. This is, is of course, the Osable River at the Osable Chasm. And this is formed in the same way that the Grand Canyon is formed. The river weather and erodes away sediments to form the Grand Canyon of the East. If you look closely at these rocks, you'll see the horizontal layering that we also saw in those pictures from the Grand Canyon. I'm hoping you recognize this place, but again, our theme being sedimentary rocks, we are seeing more pictures of sedimentary rocks. This is of course Keysville, and so you see the ice flow uh, in the bottom of the picture, which is the Osable River cutting through the rock that's at the surface of the earth, Keysville sandstone, which is one type of sedimentary rock. And if you look at the rest of the picture, you just see buildings and the Keystone Bridge, which are all made from sedimentary rock, the Keysville sandstone. So sedimentary rocks are all around us, and we most often find them at the surface of the earth. So humans have used those rocks to build stuff. Sedimentary rocks are important for probably a bunch of different reasons, but really two reasons in particular. The first is that we say that igneous rocks are the history books for the earth. In order to under, or understand or really figure out what happened or what was happening on the earth millions of years ago and hundreds of millions of years ago, we have to look at the clues in sedimentary rocks. So things like fossils, which are some sort of remains of some living organism, or other clues or evidence in sedimentary rocks have led scientists to infer what the Earth was like at different times throughout Earth's history. So they've seen all these different creatures uh, that have existed on Earth, some of which are still around, some of which are, are extinct. And they've also been able to infer what Earth's climate was like, different ice ages or warmer periods, or even been able to determine that different catastrophic events have occurred. Things like massive volcanic eruptions or meteor impacts. 
Evidence of all these things are left in sedimentary rocks. The other two rock types aren't really able to preserve the history of the earth in their rock record. So understanding what happened in earth's history is due because of the evidence in sedimentary rocks. Kind of an interesting standpoint of this is this creature, which you see right here, is an, an extinct organism called the Eurypterus. The artist's conception of what it would have looked like is on the right, and a fossil specimen is in the picture on the left. So there's some random guy, I, I don't know who he is, but he's standing next to a rather large Eurypterid fossil in a sedimentary rock. So we knew that in the rock that's currently in New York State, hundreds of millions of years ago, this organism existed in the shallow seas or whatever ocean was there. And we have since uh, named it the New York State fossil. So just like we have the New York State bird or the New York State flag, we have a New York State fossil. It is the Eurypterus and it is found in rocks, specifically sedimentary rocks, which are the only type of rocks that truly contain fossils. And we find these rocks with these creatures in New York State. Sedimentary rocks are also important because of their economic implications. They contain fossil fuels, things like coal, petroleum, crude oil, natural gas, things we use for energy are found, either they are sedimentary rocks or they're found in association with sedimentary rocks. So they're extremely important. And then we ore other things from sedimentary rocks. One interesting example is rock salt. So you are you are looking at a picture of a salt mine and there's again layers and layers and layers, horizontal layers of sedimentary rock. This is actually a salt mine. It's kind of a extreme example. This is from Poland. This is a cathedral and they cut this structure into the layers of salt. And you can actually go there and I suppose have a mass or get married in a giant salt cathedral. Feel free to click on the link that says more on the right hand side of this page. And there's a couple other crazy looking uh, salt mines to check out. All right, so sedimentary rocks, the rocks formed by sediments. So what the heck are sediments? They are pieces of other rocks. So fragments is another term that you're going to hear that basically just means pieces. So when Mother Nature breaks a rather, another rock down, that process is called weathering, you form sediments. Sediments, they are smaller pieces of rocks. They can be of any composition. That means the minerals that are in them can be anything. If you have really small pieces, they're probably just one mineral throughout. But if you have larger pieces, you probably have a couple different minerals that are formed together. Besides having different compositions, they can also come in different sizes. And so we break them into six different categories for how we classify the size of sedimentary rocks. Uh, so if you turn to page 60 reference table, you'll see this graph. Now the graph shows how quickly a stream needs to move or its velocity in order to move different size sediments. So on the left, you see particle diameter. And essentially, which you probably know, the stream, when it moves faster, can move bigger stuff. And we'll look at exactly what the graph, how to read the graph later. But if you look at the right hand side of this graph, you'll see six different words that are the six different classifications for sizes of sediments. They are boulder, cobble, pebbles, sand, silt, and clay. Those are the six different categories for sizes of sediments. So what I've done is colored these horizontal bands so I can read the graph a little bit better and kind of see where the limits are for each different size. So what I want you to do is to pause this video, get some colored pencils, and make your reference table look kind of like this. Okay, great. Now that you've done that, 
we can continue on. So here's a picture from a Sable Point Park. You're looking at the green mountains, but in the foreground you have sand. So sand is just the size of a sediment. It's a certain size. It's greater than 0 0.006 centimeters. So when you can see sand, when you can see a sediment that you can basically see the individual grain, it's probably sand or bigger. Silt and clay are really tiny and they're really difficult to see one single piece of it. Here's a couple of pictures I took from J Mountain. On the right is a picture from the open ridge line along J Mountain. Uh, you can see my dog there. And the picture on the left is a picture of gravel that I took while hiking along this path. That gravel is all more or less pebble sized sediments. That is, they are sediments, they're bigger than sand size, smaller than cobbles. They might be a centimeter or so across. Again, there's a range of size. And you'll see all these different colors. So what they're made of or it could be anything. But they're considered pebbles because of the size of the sediment. Here's a, another picture I took along that same route. This is more towards the base of the hike. And this is an old uh, rock wall that was probably constructed by farmers trying to get all the, the stones off their field. So they build these rock walls. And the size of most of these sediments would be considered boulder size. That is the largest size sediments. They're like about 25 centimeters in diameter or bigger. If we look at a closer picture of just one of these sediments, you can see its size relative to the spearmint candy I have in the bottom of this picture. Because again, strictly based on their size, we would consider these boulders. So we can classify sediments based on their size. This last picture is of a cobblestone structure. So you can see on your reference tables, cobbles are kind of that in-between category between pebbles and boulders. And so you can find structures made up of sediments that are about that size, maybe about the size of a grapefruit. So this is just some random cobblestone shed, I suppose. Maybe it's a house, but it's kind of tiny. So you tell me, I don't know. So besides classifying sediments by size, we can also classify them based on their origin. Basically, where did those sediments come from? The first type in this classification system is, called, is clastic. So clastic sediments are pieces of other rocks. And so if we look at this picture, we can see that it is a sedimentary rock made up of clastic sediments, and it's basically just pieces of other rocks stuck together. Here it is in close-up, and so if we zoom in, you're just seeing different size fragments. You know, some are big, some are small, but they're just pieces of other rocks. Most of the time, this stuff is inorganic, so that means, again, you know, it's not living in nature, uh, or at least, you know, didn't come from something that was once living. A lot of this, it would be like... Uh, crushing up a piece of granite and then sticking those pieces back together. That would be basically what a clastic sedimentary rock is. The processes that cause this to happen are compaction and cementation. And so when you watch video two, it'll get into that a little bit further. And when you look at the sedimentary rocks all over my classroom, most of them are going to be clastic sedimentary rocks. Some of the particles are going to be easy to see, and some of the particles are going to be so fine, the sediments that is are so fine, so tiny, that it's going to be difficult to see them. The second type of sediment are crystalline sediments. And basically these are just crystals of various size, all kind of grown together. You should recognize the rock in this picture. Here it is in close up. So we would describe this as a crystalline sedimentary rock. You'll notice that these rocks are typically monomineralic. That's just a way of saying they have just one mineral throughout, as opposed to the last variety, which had many different minerals compacted and cemented together. That was the classic sedimentary, classic sedimentary rock. The crystalline ones have just one mineral grown together. These ones we're, we're going to see in video two 
formed by the processes of evaporation and precipitation. Basically, we have crystals somehow pop out of water and form these sedimentary rocks. The last type of sediment type we have in sedimentary rock is bioclastic. So bio is a prefix you should remember from hopefully ninth grade, but bio refers to things that are living. So bioclastic are sediments that come from something that was once living, whether it be a plant or an animal. You can see the picture here in the close-up. The remains that we're talking about in this case, this limestone, are shell pieces. So we take shell pieces and we get them to stick together. We form a bioclastic sedimentary rock. The most common type of particle stuck together, the bioclastic particles stuck together or sediments stuck together, is shells. It could be large shells like you saw in the previous pictures, or really tiny or microscopic remains that somehow come form back together to form a sedimentary rock. The other type of bioclastic that we're going to run into is coal. And coal is kind of unique because it's one of the few rocks that are made from plant remains. And so if you take plants and you squeeze them underground for a long period of time, you form coal. And so that would be considered to have a bioclastic nature. If you look at your reference table, this is page seven. This is the scheme to identify sedimentary rocks. And we're going to use this for the sedimentary rock lab. And the different types of sediments are described by texture. So texture is used to describe crystals in an igneous rock. And whether they're large or small, we use the words fine and coarse. But here, texture is used to describe the origin of where the sediments came from. And so you see the categories we have for texture are clastic. That's the one in the top left cor corner. We have crystalline. And below that, we have bioclastic. So sedimentary rocks are made of pieces of other rocks we call sediments. And we can classify the sediments either based on their size or based on their origin. And some of this is shown in this page from the reference table. I'll leave you with this. This is a picture of me <laughs> looking slightly different and my buddy Wu. And we are at the Eternal Flame, which is a formation. You can see the fire in the little alcove of the sedimentary rock formation. Um, this is in south of Buffalo, kind of near his house in uh, Orchard Park, near where the Bills play. And you have natural gas, which is, again, like I mentioned way early in this thing, formed and found in association with sedimentary rocks. That natural gas is pouring out of this rock formation. Someone lit it on fire, and the thing stays lit, for the most part, all the time. The other thing you can recognize in this picture are the horizontal layers, again, where the rocks formed uh, in the sedimentary rock formation. All right, so that's it. Probably too long. Uh, hopefully you have these things written down. What are sedimentary rocks? How are they formed? Why they're important? And then the two different ways that we classify sedimentary rocks. And hopefully you colored, covered, uh, colored your reference table. All right? Obviously I'm done, so stay tuned for part two.